Okay, so this is uh, episode three on music tutorials on uh, FL Studio and uh, for some, okay. for uh, now we're going to be working with the piano roll and showing how to do precision precision pitch editing. Uh, I wouldn't say quite ultimate precision, but pretty the second best you can get to, other than just simply turning a knob much much better and uh, the ability to be able to put an entire uh, entire uh, a bunch of the same instrument instead of having a bunch of them with different pitches have it all within one line to make it a lot more simple if you were following along before you would have this and what we're going to do is continue to add on to this by adding something else from uh, I think it's just a bit loud from uh, over here we're going to continue to add something from over here we're going to add it to this and make something interesting so first thing we want to do is figure out something uh, I don't want the crashes though. Actually, you know, let's add this. Let's go ahead and add that to a sample channel, the hat CL01. Let's rename it, uh, let's just rename it hat CL. Let's make it, let's make it teal. There you go. Okay. Now, first thing we want to do to, well, first let me explain this real quick. If you click on any of these, you open up the properties menu, which is hidden a bit for me. There. And uh, of course, you can drag it. Uh, it opens up the property menu. And uh, a couple of these things will be actually available on the left side here. This is pan, and this is volume, and this is the same thing. So if you notice on the left side, if you, if you, if you look right here, when I turn the volume here, it turns there because it's the same thing. You can reset that. The pitch, however, is not there. Now, there's several ways to make to change pitch, but if we're going to do it several different ways within one uh, within one channel, these are, all, these are all channels, these are considered each uh, individual channel, and right now we're enabling this. This little light right here, this green light means that we selected this channel, and now we've selected that, that, but right now we're going to enable this. And uh, if we enable pitch on here, you know, first let's, let's go ahead and, my bad, let's go ahead and reset that, and if I put one here and make this a solo, that's the current pitch, but if I drag it negative, which makes it deeper, got a lot deeper. But if we go past neutral and go up higher, it's going to be a higher pitch, which is a lot different from the original. But uh, once again, these uh, these turning things work the same way as all the other stuff. You can either click, hold, drag up and down, or you can use your mouse wheel if you hover over it. But it'll do a little more precise if you do the mouse wheel. As you can see at the bottom right, my thing says how many uh, it's negative by, but if you just do one click of the mouse wheel, it's not quite as precise as if you were to do it with uh, dragging. But there's an even more uh, precise way to do this, and I'm going to show you how. But that's, I guess, a little uh, overview of a uh, few things you can do right here with uh, how to edit pitch. We'll get to all the other stuff in just a bit, and how to edit this as well, the wave. But right now, we have it selected. Let's go ahead and close that. We have this selected right here, as you can tell. Now we're going to open up the piano roll, which is located right here. It's a little picture of a piano, pretty obvious. It says view piano roll. The shortcut is F7. Up to whoever, if you like shortcuts, or if you rather just press the buttons. I prefer to press the buttons. Let's go ahead and open that. And it brings up this. Now mine's red. Yours probably won't be. Uh, let's let's keep that open, actually. Yeah, your, yours probably won't be red. If you'd like to customize it, there's a little drop down arrow. It says piano roll options. You go ahead and hit view. And uh, grid color, you can change grid, the shadow. Shadow, actually, I'll show you what shadow does. Time segments, we want to keep on four bars. I'll show you why in a little bit. Uh, the settings I have on here, you'd probably want to keep. But the color, change whatever you want. I mean, just like any other color editor. I'm going to change the color. I like red because it's easier to show up and it doesn't blind you. If you put white or black, it probably will mess you up. So I'd recommend a color that's not extremely bright. That's why I have it down but not crazy in the eyes either. I personally love red and black, that's why uh, a lot of my stuff is red and black. So, if you want to customize it to have a certain color, go here. I chose red because, well, yeah. And a couple other things. Now, you'll see here that each one has the uh, correct note. If you're familiar with pianos, you'll know these notes. And it goes all the way down to C0, it goes all the way up to B10. And of course we have uh, flats and sharps as well in here. And the neutral, the neutral one that starts here is C5. You see that? If I delete that and go back into here and play it, it's the same one. But if you go up, it's a little higher, go down, a little lower. You can obviously see how this works. 
and I should have said I'd do that. On the left side, if you click any of these, you can hear the pitch. And it gets really devastating if you go down. Go really high, it gets really pitchy. Little ticks. Now let's go back to C5. Where are you, C5? There you are. And uh, you can just also hold and just have a barrage of sounds coming into your ear. But I don't like doing that too much. Okay, so uh, the first thing... Oh, one more thing I'd like to say. See where it says ABC up here, you can see keyboard view mode. If you're more into piano, you can switch it right to piano. It even has a little time segment so you know where it is if you're more familiar with this. If you're a piano person, then this will probably be your thing. But uh, that's, that's not mine. I prefer this. It's a lot easier for me. And it's color-coded, just so I can enjoy it as well. Uh, oh, a couple other things. You left-click to uh, place, and you right-click to delete, just how in the step sequencer. But uh, there's a couple things you may note you might actually do by accident. These little time frames, you can, if you have the little arrow, you can drag it. But it won't do anything for these, because they're not continuous, or they don't have a loop enabled on that instrument. So uh, I'll show you how to do that when we get to strings. Right now we're not going to focus on strings because strings, there's a big thing to have to go through to be able to do strings, and I'd rather teach plugins first before we get the strings to, to make it uh, successful so you don't mess it up. Uh, but anyway, if you want to, oh, like I did before, I should have explained it. If you go into this, uh, well, mine's black. I don't know what color yours will be, but this little bar up here right between the, uh, the scroll and the, uh, the actual stuff you place in, in the grid, Right here, if you uh, use your mouse wheel, you can make it bigger or smaller. Here's a better example if you see that. Bigger or smaller. And, uh, of course, we have the other scroll here. You could just use your mouse wheel. And right here, the change note size. If you drag up or down on this, this little black uh, rectangle, you can uh, drag up. It makes the notes really fat. You drag it small, it makes it really tiny, but it, it limits what you can see. I prefer this in the uh, in that position. It's easiest to uh, do. And, uh, okay, so let's go ahead and get started on uh, doing some notes. So, uh, first thing we want to do is figure out something that works with the current beat we have. So, if I go ahead and, uh, well, first you want to make sure, if you're going in the piano roll, best bet is to delete anything inside here because you won't need it. I'll show you why in a minute. So, first we're going to want to do is enable this. Now, you'll notice... One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four sections of four throughout. It's the same thing as this. This big black line considers how long your pattern is. Our pattern is that. If we if we increase the pattern, you'll notice the, the black line gets pushed back. See that? You can see it right here if you pay attention, if you can see it. I'm sorry for the color, it's kinda of hard to see. It will it will drag it to the correct size of the loop. In this case, uh, if you want to get precise editing going on with that. But things I will note. If you do something like place it on the outside parameter, and you go in here, you'll see that it's in the middle, because this is actually where our loop is. This entire thing is right here, but this is all the extra. Because when you put it into the next, it's going to forward to the re to the next loop. Watch what happens. See that? It passed past here because this is the end of our loop in in the in the piano roll section, and this is the start of the next loop. But we don't have that here. Watch what happens if I increase this to 8, which is double, which would be the second loop. You see that? How now it's in the middle right here, and but there's nothing here as if it was over here. No, that's a bit confusing the way I said it, but basically your best bet would be to staying in the perimeter of uh, where the black line is, unless you are a little more advanced and know what you're doing. To make separate size loops without making them all the same size, basically. So if we go ahead and uh, okay, we get started with this, let's, let's do something random. No, let's, yeah, let's do something really random. Very weird, isn't it? But uh, we can go ahead and decrease the volume. It might sound a little better. Maybe add a little more to it. That's actually pretty good. Let's keep that. So now that we have, oh, right here, now you'll notice right here that the, uh, it, it scales out the piano roll actually in the section here. So it won't come up as this. That's why I said don't put anything here because it'd be pointless. It would just play it twice. If I had a better example placed one there, I could show you. But it's, it's pretty hard to get rid of it once you have one in here and then you also have this overlapping. 
So uh, what we're going to do is uh, make sure that nothing is in, in the, in, in the. Oh gosh, sorry, I'm kind of stumped right now. In the in the channel, if there's nothing in the channel section, then you're good to go with the piano roll, because the piano roll is precision. Wouldn't say quite amazing precision pitch editing, but if you want to get all this without having to create several ones and edit the pitch right here with each one and make one of several, it way easier to do it from here. That's why I love the piano roll. It's perfect for uh, doing these such things. Uh, so now what we're going to do, now that we have this enabled, uh, if you now's the time to teach a little bit about extending our our loop, or pattern, I'm sorry. Well, it is pretty much a loop as of now, but we're going to split it up to make it not really a loop anymore. To split it up into, not split it, I mean extend it, ha uh, double the size so we can make this sound a little better so it's not just constant. What we're going to do is this one note right here, that note right there, we're going to, uh, oh, and if you wanted to know, instead of uh, right clicking on each one to delete it, you can double click and drag, and they'll all glow red, and I think when you delete one, it deletes them all. Or you can use the delete function, which is under the piano roll options, edit, and then delete. You can also duplicate it and move it around and copy, you know, cut, paste, all the, all the stuff you'd normally find. But I must warn, if you do drag, I'm sorry, don't drag with that, if you drag, there's a tool up here, it's just to select, this little parameter, if you drag it with this, you won't be able to move it, you just drag more, so as soon as you do that, you want to go back to the pencil, and then you'll be able to drag it, but we're not going to do that, and then you right click to deselect, of course, so the draw is always the best one we want to go with, there's a bunch of other ones you want to mess around with if you want to check it out, uh, I don't use much of these, probably the select, That'd probably be all the ones that I've listened to. Wait, what, what, is, what does Playboy do? Oh, this is what I was looking for before. Okay, I finally found it. The uh, playback option, which is apparently the uh, shortcut of Y when you're inside the program, is uh, if you click and hold, it'll play anything in that spot. <clears throat> Excuse me. It'll play anything that it hovers over. See that it's pretty cool. I can apparently right click too. Anyway, now that we got that figured out, we're gonna go ahead and extend our loop. So what we're gonna do is see now that um, normally it would be at this. We're gonna go ahead since it's at four is its default state. We're gonna go ahead and go up to eight. And now it doubles our loop. And now that we have a doubled loop, we can go ahead and copy everything we have here and put it over there. So since our now you can't normally do this with everything, but we place uh, the kick and the snare a certain way where we'll be able to actually continue it. Now you'll see that it's at every start of every, uh, it's basically, uh, I think one fourth, but uh, here's what we're going to do. Where we hit click, we're going to go ahead and right click on it and see how it says fill each two steps. That means every other one, every other two, every other one, sorry, would be selected. If I, if I go ahead and try that, it'd be like that. But we don't, that's if you want a quick select and not have to click each individual one. Four, that's too much, too. We have to go fill each every eight, and now I can see our thing is filled. We could have just placed them and not have been lazy, but I just wanted to prove that feature existed. Now with this, you can't because it starts with the first and goes on. These are second, so we're going to actually have to fill these in. As for the hat, we're going to have to remember how we put it. It's this one, this one, this one, and then the two last. So every second to last, and then the two last. But, uh... Okay, now that we've got this, so now it's all filled out, let's see. Now we've made our loop bigger, which is good, but now we have to extend this. So how we're going to do is we can actually use one of the functions I explained earlier. Now if we go ahead and drag using the, uh, the, the selector E shortcut tool, go ahead and drag over all of them, make sure you got them. Go under the piano roll options, go to edit, and go to duplicate. And now it will duplicate it. You want to make sure you hit the draw before you touch it or else it's going to mess it up and you're going to have to move each individual one. Hit the draw, hover over one, click and hold, and drag. And for some reason, it copied it. And I don't know why. Well, here's a perfect opportunity to use undo. So there's undo. Why did that, why did that make two? Okay, well, it didn't do it that time. Well, anyway, you want to make sure you drag it and around the middle line here. You want to make sure that the C5 is uh, in the middle, and then the rest of it will follow. 
and it's best to have a mouse when you're using this program. If you use a touchpad, you can do it. It's a bit hard, though. It's a bit hard to do with a touchpad. I know, because I have a laptop and I'm using it right now, and I have a mouse. It's a lot easier, trust me. So now that we have these, we want to right-click the deselect, but here's what we wanted to do this in the first place. It's still a loop, but what we're going to do is delete this one down here. The uh, G number four, we're going to delete that. So now it should continue on. Let's go ahead and try it now. See how that works? It goes, but then it continues and changes the second part. We're also going to make it unique. Let's go ahead and fill in the shakes right below the, the last snare and all the way across. So let's go ahead and try that. That's pretty good. And let's, uh, let's try a kick too. Let's try a kick right to the second to last. Let's go ahead and try that. pretty good actually I like that so now that we've learned a little bit about the piano roll and how to place instruments in it to make them different pitch uh, we can go ahead and yeah we can go ahead and uh, exit out of this so there's a little X button here here's how you close it you can you can either press it up here to get rid of it or you can uh, you can uh, get rid of it by this and now that that it disappeared on here I also want to show you if you see this and it confuses you how to fix it now there's two ways to do this you can either close it and make sure you select the one that you actually want and reopen it or up here there's there's two drop down menus now watch out on the left side here you see that it says piano roll and then the name of the instrument we named it to now you see it's checked checked means that there's actually something placed in here for that instrument for the current pattern and if we have multiple patterns and you, and I'll get to that later I don't want to explain that now and confuse you but when we get to uh, multiple patterns I'll show you why the check mark always can be deceiving depending on how you're looking at it you gotta be careful but nothing, nothing else within this loop is in the piano roll. You can see that hat, hat CL is the only one that you see filled out. Nothing else in the piano roll. And you can see that it's the only one checked. But if we go ahead and select another one, it still doesn't check it. But if I put something in here, it checks it. So watch out for that. And uh, that's if you want to select different instruments, you go up here and select it. Okay. So, uh, and the, uh, the second one, we'll get to all this later to do more precision editing and how to make uh, more interesting things with it. But uh, now that we got we got all that, let's go ahead and close this. And uh, I think I think we're pretty much good here for the uh, piano roll. Let me think. Is there anything else we can do here? No, I don't think so. So I guess I'll get back to in the next episode we will we will start we will start what should we start? We can start... I guess we'll start strings. We'll start how to... Yeah, we'll start how to edit strings. So uh, we'll start to import a string from somewhere in here. Ooh, why is that open? It's a bit confusing. Okay, we're going to start by uh, editing... We're going to start by uh, finding a good string, putting it in here, and making it a part of it now that we've got ourselves a little beat. Now, I know this might not be the taste of anybody that's uh, listening to the video. That, that might be not the best taste of music. But it's just an example of showing you what you can do. I've made much more impressive things than this. I'm not bragging. I'm saying that you can do much better than this. This is very basic. And if you're very proud of this, I'm not saying it's bad, go for it. Because there's a lot more you can do than uh, just this. This is very basic. You know, start, start uh, editing and shots. So until next time.